We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a do it yourself blog, YouTube channel, and podcast that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home with paint, power tools, and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 112 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. I am so excited about today's interview because I got to sit down with a really good friend who's an old friend, but I hadn't talked to him for a while. But when we started talking, we realized we had so much more in common than we realized. (laughs) This is an old friend named Chad Smith. He is someone who I've known since I was a teenager. And I was actually interviewing in his podcast. And he was gracious enough to lend himself to me for about another hour so that I could just pick his brain about health-related information, things that we can do to get ourselves in shape, get our bodies in shape, especially if you are a beginner, you don't really know where to start, you don't know what kind of goals to sit for your, to set for yourself, and you really just want to take care of your health. And this has been a topic near and dear to my heart over the last week, and this is why there was no episode last week. So last Friday, when I normally drop an episode, I had gotten word that my mom was in the hospital. And thankfully, she's okay. I will preface this by saying she's fine. She's recovering at home. But I've spent a lot of time over the last week dealing with that emotionally, dealing with that physically by being there, trying to help support her so that there was no episode last week. (laughs) I just didn't have it in me to record. I was busy that Friday, busy all day that Saturday. And then Sunday, I woke up and I felt drained. I had a headache. I thought maybe I was coming down with something, but I really think it was just the stress of dealing with a sick parent. And, you know, seeing your parent in a hospital bed for the first time when they've always been, you know, the matriarch of the family. And even even though my mom has become more frail over the years, she's still the matriarch of the family. There is a certain power, a certain strength that that embodies. And so when you see someone vulnerable, someone who's your parent or someone who you look up to, that's always had that high position of power in your life, and you see them vulnerable in a hospital bed, it takes a lot out of you. And I didn't realize that I'd been kind of holding all that stuff in for a couple of days. And that it just pretty much rendered me useless on Sunday. Because normally, if I forget to, I don't say forget, if I don't do the podcast on a Friday or Saturday, by Sunday, That podcast is recorded and it's out, but I didn't have the energy to get up and do it. I just didn't. And so I've been thinking a lot this week about our health and how, you know, over the years, of course, we are going to age and how we help to, I don't want to say prevent that because we're all going to age. We, there, there's just no way around it, but we've all seen some of those people who let's say are in their sixties and they've taken really good care of themselves And they're able to go about their daily lives, they're doing traveling, they're doing fun projects with their grandkids, and they're moving their body, you see them walking, maybe a little bit of weight training. And then you see the other population of people who are pretty sedentary, they're not moving around doing very much, they're not lifting weights, they may not be eating a good diet. And very quickly, their body starts to deteriorate. And when you think about this, there's a lot of things that you need to be able to do around your own home that you need you need your physical health to do, you know, like cleaning your home. And this week, this is something that had come up in my own mom's uh, life because she is out of the hospital. She was there for almost a week. She's okay. She, she's dealing with some chronic health issues, but there was a, uh, an acute issue that had come up that's been taken care of and now she's recovering. But she wanted me to come and visit her And I did go see her in the hospital, but when she was home, she wanted me to come visit her and she wanted me to clean her floor. That's all she needed. She said, I I really just need you to vacuum and to mop the floor. And I did that. She's in a small apartment. I pulled everything out away from the walls and just did a massive, you know, de-dusting of the house, everything. Like even the Venetian blinds, I wiped those babies down because she needed help. And so it got me thinking about 
are we really taking care of ourselves so that we could live the best life possible? Are we taking care of ourselves so that we can do the DIY projects, that we can focus on the hobbies and the lifestyle that we want? You know, and not just focusing on the fun stuff, but the basic necessities of being able to clean your house. You know, how do you ensure that what you're doing right now at 35, 40, 45, 50 is going to serve you well so that when you're 60, 65, 70, maybe, maybe there's some people listening who are older than that. What are you doing today that is going to serve you and your body later so that you can stay in your home later so that you're less dependent on people taking care of you so that when you have health challenges that come your way, maybe you've been kind of building up your stamina. You've been weight training and you don't have to be a bodybuilder, but maybe you've been weight training so that when you do need to get a surgery, you're able to bounce back. In fact, there was someone who had commented on one of my recent posts who said one of her family friends, who I think she might have been 72 or 73, had had some sort of aortic dissection or something, some sort of heart surgery or heart procedure. And the only way that this woman was able to get the procedure is because she was so active and in good health. Because she was in good health, that made it possible for the surgeon to even do the surgery and for her to recover. And so I wanted to share that with you. And I wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about my mom's journey and how I see now what we do now in 20 years, it's going to make a world of difference. And maybe, maybe not even 20 years, even just a year from now, everything that you do for your body is going to serve you and your mental capacity well, right? You're going to feel better physically, but because you feel better physically and you're able to do all of the hobbies and activities that you enjoy, it's going to serve you mentally. So this is why it's so important to me. And my friend Chad had reached out and wanted me to be on his podcast. And I said, man, we're having such a great time talking. How about you come and be on my podcast? So we literally stopped recording after about an hour. And I said, I'm going to send you a Zoom link. Come on over to my podcast and let's continue this conversation. His podcast, we were talking about business topics. He was asking me how I got started with thrift diving and when did I know that it was a, a real legit business. So we talk about business topics on his podcast, which is called Life, Love and Hustle. It's going to be dropping May 15th. I will leave a link down below when it's available. But he came over to my podcast and I said, hey, I've got to talk to you <laughs> because Chad is he does a lot of things. He is a, uh, he's, he was a gym owner. So he had a, he was a personal trainer. He owned his own gym. He also, uh, sells insurance. <laughs> and I found out that he's got another company called, uh, five lions marketing.com. And he does, he does a lot of AI and chatbot work for, for companies, for brands. So he's just an amazing guy. And I, I know that I'm talking a lot, but I just kind of wanted to set up for you, the reason why Chad and I had this conversation. And I think what you're going to get out of this is if you are somebody who is a beginner, let's say you're not working out, you're not, and when I say working out, you don't have to run five miles. But if you are living a sedentary lifestyle, that's going to catch up to you if it hasn't already. And because of that, it's going to prevent you from being able to fully live your best creative life. It's going to prevent you from being able to do some of the things in your home that you'll need to be able to do to take care of yourself, right? We all want to stay in our home. We don't want to go to nursing homes if possible. So you have to take care of your health today so that down the road, you're more likely to be able to be independent, focus on your crafts, your hobbies, the things that make you healthy. Because I can tell you right now, because my mom is so focused on her health right now, she hasn't been able to do anything else but focus on her health. And that personally, in my opinion, is mentally draining. It was draining for me after two days. Imagine living that lifestyle. That's got to be very draining. And I'm sure she misses being able to do some of the things that she used to do. She's got to get herself stable in order to then be able to focus on these things. And here's the great thing. My mom actually wants me to help her. <laughs> so I'm going to be her personal trainer and I'm going to help nurse her back to or get her into good health. So maybe I'll give you some of those updates going forward. But anyway, let me stop talking and let's jump into the in interview now with Chad Smith. And let's talk about our health and getting ourselves in good physical conditioning. 
Let's go right now. Chad, what's going on? Man, listen, I'm just happy to be talking to you. I think I've spent more time with you today than I ever have my entire life. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and and here's the thing. We have known each other for, gosh, what year did you graduate? I graduated in 95. I graduated in 92. Okay. Oh, so you're, so you're part of the class with my sister. Yep. 92. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we were, we were at Bowtech together. When the, yeah, just, just sister and I, we were in Bowtech. Wow. Yeah, I was oh, in culinary God. arts. But believe it or not, I had aspirations of becoming a chef. Ooh. So do you cook now? Oh, I cook like a, oh yeah, like, an, like a pro. Are you kidding me? I'm a great you cook. You cook any vegetarian things? Oh yeah. I cook. So if I came by your house, I could test out some of your vegetarian meals. Listen, your mouth's gonna fall in love with this food. I'm telling you, uh, I'm a great cook. I've been, I've been, I've been plant based for the past like two years now. What? Yeah, oh no protein. Gosh. You know, you know, you know, still jacked up. You know, <laughs> yeah, no meat. Wow. Okay, so so that's another thing that we have in common. So I'm gonna say it here. Uh, you punched me in the eye a long time oh, ago. Oh, come on, man! <laughs> you can't tell that story. Come on. Okay. <laughs> That's the zinger. Let me go back and, and <laughs> do you remember that? Okay. So I, yeah. So you and I were friends back in the day and uh, I don't know, we were just sort of like shadow boxing in front of my, my locker. And right when you were just going like this, I went like this. You leaned right into it. <laughs> I leaned right into it. And I remember it was right around homecoming time because when I went to homecoming, you know, we just had it in the gym and there were, uh, flashes from the photography. And every time it flashed, like this pain would go through my eye, like this ache, like oh, wow. boom, boom. Oh, that's so terrible. See, now I feel bad about that again. I forgot all about that. I didn't forget about it. I was telling my son about it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be doing a podcast interview with Chad. And uh, you know, punched Chad, me in, the eye in high school. Yeah, he punched me in the eye in high school. That was, <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, I'd never been hit in the eye before. but And hopefully never since. Hopefully never no, since. No, no. no I, thankfully good. <laughs> you're not a fighter. You know, you know, no, I I like to fight with words. I don't fight with my fists. <laughs> I probably could if I needed to. Um, but yeah, but I'm really excited to talk to you today because not only did we, like you and I just talk, you have a new podcast that's dropping soon. I think uh, June 15th. Uh, no, sorry, May 15th. Yeah, right? May 15th. Yeah, exactly. May 15th, May 15th. Called Life, Love, and Hustle. And you have been interviewing people, kind of asking them about how they got their business started, how, like, what's important to them in life. You've been having a lot of conversations. I can't wait to listen to your other interviews. And so you wanted to interview me about thrift diving and how I got started and, you know, kind of like what's next. And that was a great, great conversation. Oh, it was a great time. We had a good time. And it's so funny because you said, well, this is the longest I've talked to somebody. <laughs> for an and I said, I should have warned you because I can, talk. <laughs> I can definitely talk. Um, but we were having such a good conversation and I thought, why don't I have you on my podcast? Because I need an episode. And I liked what we were talking about and I like who you are and the things that you do. It's relevant to my audience. So, uh, you have, you, you have a few things going on. So now you're a podcaster, but you also are a trainer, personal trainer, and you also are, uh, someone who helps people get insurance set up, right. To make sure they're adequately insured their home, their their life, their boat, whatever. And so you have a lot of things that you're doing that I think is relevant to the thrift diving audience. But I wanted to talk to you today and we can talk about any or all of those things. But what I wanted to talk to you to do, to talk to you about today was the importance of taking care of your body. This is something that I don't know if you've been into taking care of yourself since high school. Is this something that you started in high school or when did you decide that fitness was important and that you were going to inspire other people. Yeah. To, well, I started to... in high school because I was a lifetime, like comic book nerd. And I still am. I love everything. Comic books, you know, Batman books, uh, X-Men books, Thor, all that stuff. I love all the movies. I've seen all the movies. I haven't missed one of them. Um, the, um, so I always wanted to have that superhero physique because I was a bullied kid when I was little, you know, and I, and I always felt weak so when I found out um, that you could actually get stronger from my, believe it or not, my eye doctor, he, he was a bodybuilder and he, oh, used wow. to, he used to give me these bodybuilding magazines 
And I used to uh, read about, you know, the way they used to work out and how they used to eat. This is, this is like middle school. Then when I got to high school, um, I got into a, a weightlifting class, after school weightlifting class. Um, do you remember Mr. Nepper? Remember, remember, you, I remember you know, the name, but I don't remember him. Shout out to Gary Nepper, North Hagerton High School. <laughs> shout out. But uh, we worked out, me and my friends, we worked out three days a week in his after school training program. And we started just getting strong and fell in love with it. And that was all we wanted to do was work out, and, you know, get stronger, get bigger. And we, we were competitive with it, you know. So I worked out to be the strongest one in the group. So mm-hmm. uh, I just loved it. Um, but after high school, um, I got into personal training by accident because I, I got into competitive bodybuilding. And uh, I got some newspaper articles written about me. And whenever an article came out, somebody always had questions. They always, you know, would call me or whatever. They see me on the street. Ah, I have a question about getting in shape. So I would give advice. And then uh, I began to work at uh, the Hagerstown YMCA. Shout out to the downtown YMCA back in the day, you know. Uh, so people started giving me checks. I was like, wait, I can get paid to, to do this? So I started as a part-time personal trainer and um, kind of then slowly built my career up to the point to where I could do it full-time and, um, you know, got into corporate fitness, went into management, and then uh, began an outdoor um, boot camp program, moved that up into an indoor program, started working out of multiple facilities. Then my wife at the time and I opened up our own facility called Fitness Revolution. And uh, we, you know, we built up that gym and uh, was having a great time. But in the meantime, um, I was dedicated to becoming an, an, an expert. So I studied under a lot of um, industry uh, heavyweights and got multiple certifications, always learning, always just trying to uh, become better. Um, so it, it's always been a way of life for me. I mean, I've been a powerlifter, a bodybuilder, professional wrestler. So definitely that's um, always wow. been a way of life. It always will be. Even at 48, I still, you know, I, 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 I can't do what I did in my 20s, but I'm still I'm still in really good shape. Uh, all my medicals are pretty much perfect. Um, so that's it. Yeah, it's always been a way of life. Always will be. But you can do more than the, the average 48 year old. I'm sure. I would, like, I would like to think so. <laughs> Definitely, I like to think so that I'm above average. You know, my, my my doctor says I'm I'm way above average as far as like my medicals go. So, yeah, I still I can still um, I professionally wrestled for uh, about twenty years, and wow. um, I retired like pre pandemic before pandemic happened. Hadn't been in the ring. So my old mentor John Rambo. Shout out to John Rambo, you know, shout out. Uh, talked me into coming back to the ring because he's having some medical issues. He can't really work. So um, we had um, a benefit show for him about two months ago. And I hadn't been in the ring since pre-pandemic. How was that? Yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> I got back in the ring. People said it was like I hadn't been gone. Because I could still move, I could still, you know, hit the mat and get back up. I, I was still throwing guys around. So yeah, just maintaining a base level of fitness, you know, could still enable me to get back in the ring when I want to. Now, my body the next day was talking to me. Yeah, that's a whole different issue, right? It's a whole different issue. I can do it, but the durability, ooh Lord, help me. The durability was not there. <laughs> I can do it. That and see, and that's what I've noticed is that you know, if you keep up your fitness, you you can do more things, right? But you may not you may not be able to feel the exact same way. You can't bounce back like you used to. But yeah, I think, the recovery <laughs> exactly. You can you, the recovery is a little bit more difficult. But what's interesting is that you know you've you've had this lifetime of of fitness where you're focused on your body and you're maintaining this. And what I want to know is for people who are out here. Who maybe they haven't focused on their health, but they want to. Where does somebody where does somebody start? And the reason why I don't know if I mentioned this, but I know I will mention it uh, in the intro. But the reason why this is so important to me is because I feel that without your health, you have nothing. You can't do the DIY projects that you want to do. You can't bend down to paint a piece of furniture. You may not even be able to lift something up to get it onto a table to even strip it or to 
you know, put some new fabric on a chair. It really limits you if you don't have your basic health um, in good condition, right? And plus, not even just physically not being able to do these things, but mentally, you know what it's like if, if let's say some, you have something that, that pops up that's maybe it's chronic, maybe it's something that's uh, acute that, that happens. It really pulls you away from anything related to hobbies or you're only focused on survival and getting better and feeling. Right. Better. So what are some things, and let's take it from like a standpoint of somebody, let's say somebody who is a, is a total beginner. How do they get started with saying, okay, I want to get my health uh, together. I want to get healthy and build muscle so that I can be well, like, hey, yeah. the first thing I would hard. say is, Hey, is make sure that you've got a good medical baseline. So most people don't get regular exams. You want to get a full exam, the blood panel, all the good stuff and figure out where you are from a health perspective. You know, where are you? Make sure there's no underlying issues and, or, you know, something like that. Uh, if you, once you get there, once you get a clean bill of health, or at least you're you're ready for uh, physical exercise, like um, figure out exactly what your goals are. Like set goals. If your goal is, um, I want to get in better cardio condition, what does that look like? You know, what do you want to be able to do? I want to get stronger. Okay, what does that look like? And what do you want to be able to do? You don't have to be uh, a power lifter, but you should be able to set a baseline of strength for yourself. So if you say, I want to be able to do 50 push-ups. Well, you know, that's your first goal. Or I want to be able to uh, to jog a mile. Start there. And then once you hit that goal, what's the next goal? And then what's the next goal? What's the next goal? Until you get to, you get to the point where you can figure out, like, what's my big goal? Right? Mm-hmm. So when I was a competitive lifter, my big goal was to be able uh, to do what we call the triple threat. Right? So to be able to uh, uh, squat and deadlift three times my body weight and to be able to bench press twice my body weight. So that, that was the big goal. Um, so the, the supporting goals came to get there, you know, and uh, celebrate at every point in the process. So if you say you can jog a mile and you can double that, right? Celebrate that, celebrate that. Uh, and if you can only do one push up, but you end up doing five, Celebrate that also. So goals are important and being able to celebrate every part in the journey, that's huge right there. Number two, I would say, drink your water, drink lots of water, drink lots of water. So the typical goal right now is to get about um, at least two liters a day of water, like minimum. Two liters. Okay. Yeah, two liters a day minimum. That's, you know, a good baseline for most people. Um, and then third, I would say, Eat your vegetables. Eat more vegetables. You got it. Most people don't eat near enough vegetables mm-hmm. and the day. The vegetables have all the good stuff in them that you need to help feed your cells. You are your cells, and whatever you put in your body creates those new cells. So if you're eating a bunch of trash every day, guess what your body is? Trash. Mm-hmm. If you're eating a bunch yeah. of good, colorful vegetables and you're getting lots of variety in planting, you guess what you are? You are a powerhouse now of nutrition. So you're going to function on a high level. And then after that, I would say get lots of sleep. Most people don't get near enough sleep. Uh, I didn't used to, but I found a huge difference when I'm getting eight hours as opposed to like five hours. It's a big difference for me. And the more you age, usually the more quality sleep you need as you get older. So I would say those, those things are important. Set goals, set solid goals, celebrate every point in the journey, um, drink your water, um, eat lots of vegetables and get uh, and get more sleep. Yeah, I think that most people, I think most people can do those things, but they come up with reasons why they can't. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, they don't like vegetables. Uh, they're this is what I eat. I don't. I don't like those things. And I think that if people can at least just pick out one of those things to do, like first of all, going like you said, going to the doctor, get your your baseline. Uh, laboratory, your labs done. Um, that has to be, I think that has to be true for everybody. You have to know where you start before you even begin. Um, and I would also too, Chad, I would also say, take before pictures, take measurements, because I can tell you that when I started my health journey about two years ago, I got really discouraged when I just looked at the scale and you know, I wanted that right. scale to yeah. say a certain number and it didn't. And 
if I didn't hit that number that I was looking at by a certain time, then I started feeling, oh my gosh, this is, this is not even working. I'm just going to stop. But when you take pictures, you're, you're, you're able to physically see the changes that your body is going through. And it gives you that motivation to keep going. Um, I know like one of the, one of the projects, and I kind of told you a little bit about like what's going on with my mom. I won't get into all the details, but my mom's been having some physical challenges and she's had a couple of things come up one. Well, she's had some chronic things, but there's two things that kind of came up. One is a chronic condition and one is an acute con- condition that happened, which is why I didn't post <laughs> my podcast. Right, right. And so she's someone who is like an absolute beginner. She's 68 years old. She has never really focused on health. She doesn't like, she eats some vegetables, but she's very picky in what she eats. She doesn't like to explore different foods. And she never expressed any interest in like trying to exercise or lift weights. But guess what, Chad? Yesterday she said, how do I build more muscle? Like I I need to like build more muscle. So last night I bought her one pound weights five, three pound weights, five pound weights. And I think I did eight pound weights. Did I do eight pound? I think I did eight pound weights. And I feel like I'm, I'm ready to take her on as a project. Like I want to be her personal trainer. So <laughs> going to be your project. <laughs> yes. Yes. So someone like her, someone like her, who it literally is at baseline after she, you know, I think she's had her labs done, but two questions for someone who has, let's say they've not really gone to get labs and they want to start on this journey. Are there any particular labs that they should be looking for? Any particular numbers that they should really focus on? Or maybe there's uh, a particular laboratory they need to have drawn that that they should do, but maybe it's not routinely done. And I'm thinking A1C. I don't know if that's routinely done for your glucose. And then yeah. the second question is, you know, for someone who is an absolute beginner, like my mom, Yes, setting goals, but what would be like, what would be the first step after this person, like my mom or someone who's listening to this goes and gets their labs? What's the very next thing that they should or could do? Like, what's a realistic goal? Because they might, they may not even know like what a good goal would be. I think first and foremost, um, get the full, get the full panel. Like, don't worry about one particular number. Just get the full panel. Mm -hmm. Um, Blood pressure is important. So Mm -hmm. make sure that the blood pressure is well managed, um, you know. Of course, cholesterol. You know, your A1C is important. So just get the whole gamut done and make everything important. You know. Um, also, for my men o- over forty, pay attention to your testosterone levels. Ooh, super important. Pay attention to your testosterone levels because um, that is the lifeblood of a man's performance in every area. <laughs> and for those so, who can't make- see this. Chad is giving me like the big eyes, like every area. Every so area. Make sure your T levels are where they should be. And if not, like, don't be afraid to ask for help with that. Uh, secondly, men. Well, can I, can I say, I just want to, yeah. I just want to point out there's, there's probably a lot more women that are listening to this than, than men. Although maybe there's some men out there. Tell your men, go you get yes. your T level checked. <laughs> Tell your men. Now, let me ask you, is this something that would be important for women? Can women have their testosterone? Ch- I mean, I, I know we don't have high levels. Or most of us don't. But is that something that we can do as well? Like, will uh, women, that affect us? Women, women, women as, you, as you age, especially if you've had a few children, um, tend to have crazy hormonal issues. Um, so, you, you know, you can have issues with your thyroid and uh, your uh, your estrogen levels can can be affected, uh, so that's important for women also. But you know, women tend to get up, that stuff taken care of a lot more regularly than than we do. You know, you've yeah, got your regular true. your regular lady checks. You know, uh, a lot of us men don't get regular regular uh, gentleman checks, and, and we need to. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times uh, we will have all of these problems with energy and motivation and sexual health, and a lot of it can be fixed pretty simply uh, just by managing our testosterone levels. And we can do that through nutrition, exercise, and also a medical intervention. So that's, so that's just a little side note for men. So what yeah, ladies, know. ladies, make sure your men keep your T levels nice and high. If you want the, you know, maximum performance in every area. So <laughs> <laughs> number yeah. two, I would say most people can start with just a, a basic walking program. Just walk. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to go to Planet Fitness or 
you know, Gold's Gym to get a membership, to just go for a walk every day. You can start just doing that. Go for a walk every day. Uh, go for a walk every day. That's, that's super easy to do. Um, I would also say um, mobility, flexibility is super important. So you could find yourself a nice uh, gentle yoga program or um, Pilates program uh, just to help keep your core strong or build core strength and maximize your range of motion. So, you know, if you can't see this, this is important to be able to do, right? To be able to move those shoulders nice and free, be able to move your hips nice and free. If you lose hip mobility, if you lose mobility in your hips and you lose your core strength, that's where you will begin to get old. Mm. Ooh. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that one. I'm feeling that one. And and you know what that, you know what that translates to? You're more likely to trip and fall. Yeah. And, and yeah, you'll, you'll be, you, 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 you'll, you'll be able to, uh, you won't be able to recover from those falls uh, well either. If you don't have like core strength, you don't have hip mobility, you don't have hip strength. You know, most people walk around um, in a state of being that they have tight hips, weak butt muscles. They've got, slumped over shoulders and mm. we, we've got stiff necks because we're always on the phones like this all day you know yeah. we're sitting down so we lose mobility in the hips and we lose strength in the glutes so um, that's why approaching so people say what should i do cardio strength should i do yoga i say yes you should do all those <laughs> do things all of those things yes yes there's no a b or c like take a holistic approach take a holistic view of your body and maximize your performance in every area possible. Now, you can prioritize certain things. Like you can start by getting in better cardio shape, but then add strength training and then add some mobility work, you know, so that you're a complete um, human performance machine. Mm. And then what about nutrition? What about nutrition? What should people be focusing on? I know you said fruits and vegetables, but what about the different, there's so many different diets that you hear out here, the keto diet. Yeah. And- I mean, the keto diet is one that I hear about all the time. And I think there is value in going a little bit low carb, but then I know not all carbs are are considered equal. Well, one of my favorite coaches, Coach Dan John, he had the bus bench versus the park bench philosophy. And what that means is um, if you're sitting on a bus bench, you have an expected result. Like every 15 minutes, the bus is going to come. Mm. So if I arrive at one o'clock, I know at one fifteen that bus is going to be there or should, right? Uh, then you've got the park bench. So the park bench is if you're sitting on a bench at a park, you don't have any expectations. You're just taking everything in as the experience. So this is just, you know, it's nice and easy. So you've got bus bench workouts. You've got park bench workouts. You've got bus bench nutrition. You've got park bench nutrition. So you can have general good eating. Just to, you know, general good eating. You know, you need to eat your vegetables. You need to eat clean protein sources, nice, uh, healthy plant fat. And, you know, you need to uh, eat smart carbs. That, that's just in general. Now you can do specific bus bench program to where it might be a three-week quote-unquote cleanse or it might be a three-week uh rapid fat loss acceleration program now there's things that you can do long term those are the park bench uh nutrition plans or you can do the short-term sprints which are the uh the the bus bench programs Mm -hmm. so and um honestly there's like four thousand diet books that you can find on Amazon. But a lot of the best ones always have a few things in common. They encourage you to drink more water. They encourage you to eat protein. They encourage you to eat lots of of vegetables with some moderate food consumption. Okay. Those are the common denominators. Everything else is just a variation on a theme. Mm, Right. So yeah, so you don't need to overthink it. Just pick one that you can live with and execute it as best as you can. I've always found that if you can be about 80%, about 70 to 80% compliant with any diet plan, you're going to have success. The best diet is the one you can stick to long-term. Yes. I like that. You know, there was a, there's a podcast that I just started listening to called diary of a CEO. Do you listen to it? 
Oh, I haven't heard of it. Oh gosh. Okay. Everybody should check this, this podcast <laughs> out. It's um, a, a guy, his name is Steven. I don't know his last name, but it's called diary of a CEO. And he has, he has some business minded people on his podcast, but I recently found it and I found it because of some headlines that were related to health. So he recently had a woman on, I don't remember her name, but she goes by the glucose goddess. And everything that she was saying was really interesting. She was talking about, you know, people think that it's just calories in, calories out. That's not really right, what it right. is. It's about this glucose spike, right? So it's the, right. the, the, car, the I don't want to say carbs, because carbs can be a lot of different things. It's like the, the right. things. That lots of raise, carbs. Yes. Um, you know, it could be the starchy food, the things that's going to raise your blood sugar, and then you're you're coming down off of this crash. And she said, that's where you're getting into problems. It's not that you are enjoying the the, the carbs, it's that you're not eating things in the right order. So one thing that she said that was really, really interesting, that just was mind blowing to me was always eat your vegetables first, then eat your proteins, fats, right? Eat your, you know, your pastas and your other, you know, simple carbs, and then your sweets. And she said, the reason why you eat your vegetables first is because of the fiber. So what happens is that the fiber creates this mesh. It's like this fibrous mesh that kind of coats your intestines. And so then, then when you eat the, uh, by the time you get to the, the pastas or the breads, you've got this protective mesh that's on your intestines so that you're not getting that huge sugar spike from the gluten right. from that. And so I was like, oh my gosh. So now when I eat, I'm always trying to eat the vegetables first. You should have seen me the other day. I was I was going to eat something. I don't know what it was, but I just took like a handful of arugula and my, <laughs> I washed it under the, 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 you know, sink. And I just, I just started, I, 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 I need like, so a, much like a whole rabbit. That's pretty much what it was. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. I just took a whole handful and just started eating it because it, I, I don't even know what it was, but it was something that I probably should have been eating. But she said, you never want to eat that stuff on a full stomach uh, or in an empty stomach, like anything that's the, uh, like the pastas and the breads and, right. and so, like, if you're going to a restaurant, make sure that instead of the bread that they're bringing out to you, wait to eat that towards the end, but eat the, you know, get a, um, a appetizer that's vegetables. And then you're not going to have that spike. So continue to eat the foods that you love, but don't feel that you have to, you know, get rid of them. You just have to eat it in the right order. And to me, that was just, that was mind blowing. Yeah. So, you know, I think if we can, if we can prevent these, uh, the way she explained it, if we can pre prevent these sugar spikes, you're going to maintain your energy levels throughout the day. And for me, let me tell you why that's so important to me. Because if I, if I eat something that doesn't agree with my 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 sugar, right? Mm -hmm. And I technically I am technically pre-diabetic. My father had diabetes, and for my entire adult life, whenever I've tested my A1C, it's always been a little elevated. Mm. And so in these last few months, I've really been trying to make an effort to, you know, cut down on the, the sweets and the carbs and things like that. And um, so that's why it's important to me. Well, if I eat something like, let's say a bowl of breakfast cereal, which I don't, two hours later, I feel like crap. It makes oh, yeah, me for sure. jittery. I'm, I'm jittery. And there have been times when I've not been able to work on DIY projects because by the time I come to my shed, if I've eaten something in the morning that, oh, I shouldn't have had that, then I start feeling, I don't feel good. And so if I'm not feeling good or if someone's listening to this and you notice that you have these, these afternoon dips where you're just feeling tired and maybe you want to go work on a project, but you can't do it because you're just tired. Look at what you're eating and, and, and track that and maybe eat things in the right order so that you don't have those. And there were some other tips that she gave. I'll leave a link, link down in the show notes for anyone to check out that book on Amazon. I purchased it myself because <laughs> I thought, I don't want to give up my pasta and the pizza and the things yeah. that I like, but you just got to eat it in the right order. Well, also, it, it depends on what your goals are. So if your goal is to, let's say your goal is to lose weight, okay? So there are certain foods that you absolutely have to give up at least for a short term, not forever, just for a short term. So, are one of those pizza? Yeah, one of those pizza. Oh no! You know, don't tell me that. Now, now there's a strategy that you can use. Um, if you can, if you can go 14 days on plan, like 14 days, 
seven days if you're new. If you're new at a diet, right? Every seven days, you know, if you have seven good days where you're on plan, one cheat meal. It can be whatever the hell you want it to be. It doesn't matter. You want that pizza, you want a burger, top it. Now, you want to progress. If you can get to 14 days on plan, get your cheat meal. And then the uh, the heavyweight plan is if you can go 21 days, cheat meal, right? You have to call it a cheat meal. Isn't well, that a problem, though? You know what? I don't get caught up on those kind of things. You know why? Because I call it what it is. You're cheating. No, okay. I don't think it's a cheat. It's a fair. It's a legal cheat. It's fine. It's a legal cheat. Uh, or we can call them treat meals. Or we can call them, you know, call what I you want, like but treat. eat, but but eat whatever you want for one meal as a reward. Like reframe it and think about it as a reward. You know, for seven good days, you get to reward yourself with that one off the ranch meal, whatever you want it to be. You know, or, and then you know what? Let me let me let me go ten days. Let me go fourteen days. So you're building up, you're building up your discipline over time. You know, to the point to where you know you might not even need it anymore. It might be a month. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna let the dice keep rolling on this. I feel good. But uh, just think about it. Put it on the calendar. Seven days. I'm gonna eat a hamburger and fries in seven days, but only if I make it seven days on plan. Well, here's the thing. Back to what you were saying earlier. Do you think that that is sustainable? I think for the short term, it is. I think okay. it is. I think for the short term, it is. Um, because what you're doing is you're reducing the desire because you're reframing yes. the way you think about it. Like if you tell your brain, I can't have this, your brain's going to make you want it more. But if you tell yourself, I can not have it if I do these things. Mm -hmm. Now you think about it differently. You know, now you're building in discipline of thought and discipline of action. So I can have it, but I don't want it until I get this done. You know what I mean? Well, and here's the thing. And I can tell you that after 14 days, you're probably not going to want it. That's because the idea. <laughs> that, see, not, because, see, now you're getting okay. it. <laughs> okay. Because I will tell you, I will tell you that when the times when I have cut out those things, and for me, first of all, pizza is a constant. I will never give pizza up. I used to be like, a, I'm a vegetarian now, but I used to be a, a strict vegetarian. I never claimed veganism because if there was a donut and maybe there was, I don't know, like, uh, oh, or let's just put it this way. I would, I would eat the pizza, even if I yeah. was a strict vegetarian, but I was strict vegetarian that if, let's say there was a bag of chips and there was yeah. powder and, you know, whey powder in the chips. Oh no, I wouldn't eat it because that has really? whey I used to be very, very strict. And you I were strict, strict. I was very strict, but I wasn't vegan. Vegan, you know, is, is a complete lifestyle where, you know, you won't even have honey. You won't even wear like a leather wow. belt. I never got to that level of, you know, of strict vegetarian veganism. But when I had my, my oldest son, oh, I was popping four donuts every day on my way to work. Four oh, donuts? Did you eat I, four? I, gained, I gained 60 pounds with Ooh. my first son. I'll have to show you the picture. I was, yeah, I, mm, you know, I have these little ball cheeks. I don't know. Uh -huh. I just always had them. Well, they were so plump and juicy. <laughs> you wouldn't even you wouldn't even believe. Wouldn't but, even know it was the same person. Yeah, yeah, but but I can tell you that when I when I have actually cut out um, and gone through some of these periods where I've cut out uh, snacks and treats, you you do get to a point where you don't even I don't want it anymore. But I don't Man, know what it is. It, you may even feel sick after you eat it. Yeah, depending on how much you eat. But I don't know what it is because I've always been able to then start re-eating it, right? Like it's never been a con. The only thing that I've been able to constantly get rid of is meat. And I think the reason why is because there's always been such good substitutes, you know, like the veggie yeah. burger. Everything has improved. And now when you go yeah. to any restaurant, you're going to find some veggie options mm -hmm. and it's easier to maintain. So I don't have a craving for meat because I feel that there's things that are meat ish meat like that I can eat, but I've never been able to fully give up the the craving for junk. Never. I'll, maybe I could go two months and I'm like, yeah, I don't really crave cake. I don't really need to crave cookies, but there's something well, that I love cake. Oh, I love cake. I Kings wish I could fries, go to man. Those are my crutches. I wish I could go to Costco and just buy a birthday cake for no apparent reason <laughs> other than just, just to just come home and eat it. <laughs> That's what I would love to do. Eat, eat the cake, Serena. Eat the cake. 
<laughs> no, don't tell me that. But, <laughs> but I feel, but I feel like there's there's never been a way for me to completely just rid myself of it the way that I have done meat. And I don't know if it's because I've not truly adopted those substitutes, right? There are, you know, there are like grain-free and sugar-free cookies and things that you can eat that taste similar to like the real stuff, but don't have that yeah. same effect on your blood sugar. And I don't know if I've fully adopted those so that eventually I always come back to, okay, I want cookies. I want cake. And I, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like this cycle and I'm trying to break that cycle. Even if I, even if I go two months or 21 days or however many days, how, how do we break that cycle of going back to that thing that we just love? You know what? You don't really have to. There's um, so many ways that you can hack food and make it taste just like, you know, your your classic favorite. I mean, I could make you a, a cauliflower crust pizza right now, you know. Are you promising and, to do that? Listen, I totally could. Okay, you know, I'm coming to your I house. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Come on over. I'm coming. Next time I come to Hager's <laughs> Listen, I can make you a cauliflower pizza right now with uh, mostly plant-based ingredients that you would swear was Domino's. Mm. Easily. No problem. Like, um, when I would make, when I would make um, meat-free or I would make healthier substitute foods for, you know, classic stuff that kids eat, um, my, my son, would never, he would never know the difference. Wow. Yeah, it's, all that time it, you were it, fooling him and he just didn't know. <laughs> he had no idea. No clue. He had no clue. Like I would make meatless tacos and uh, he would go to a taco place and he would say that mine were way better than theirs. You know, yeah. yeah. I'd make, yeah, it's lots of plant-based. It's all how you season things. It's the quality of the materials that you use. You know, sometimes it can taste better than what you would get mm -hmm. um, at the fast food spots. Mm, I love that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm next time I come up, I'm definitely stopping by your house and I'll you let me know. I'll put my, I'll let you know. I want that. I want that cauliflower, the, the cauliflower crust pizza. I, I want to try that for sure. I got you. It's delicious. <laughs> okay. Let's um, we only have a few minutes left. I don't want to take up too much of your time today. Um, let's just switch gears a little bit. I know I had mentioned that you sell insurance and I just wanted to ask you a question about that. What's I, I guess the question I'm asking is for people who have home insurance, right? And I did, and I actually talked to a, an insurance agent earlier in the podcast. It might've been episode six, seven, eight. I'm going to leave that link down below. But do you find that most people's homes are uninsured? And if so, what, what part of their insurance policies are they usually leaving out that they don't realize that they are underinsured? If something happens Man, in their home, this could be a whole, a whole talk. In I know we may have to have you come back for this. Yeah. One. Yeah. For sure. This one's pretty important. Your home insurance is pretty important. Yeah. Most people that I talk to do have home insurance. Um, the only way that someone wouldn't have it is if they have a lot of cash money to pay for things that they need to, you know, and just with just cash. Um, if you have a mortgage, you want home insurance, it, 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 or if you want to pay a little bit now to let the insurance company pay for potentially a lot more in case you know you do have a tragedy. I you always want to get home insurance, in my opinion. I wouldn't want to have yeah. a home without insurance. But um, most people that I've talked to, probably about four out of five people, have no idea. They've never read their policies, and uh, they have no idea what their coverages actually are. They have no idea. Um, how to make claims, they have no idea what their additional benefits are. Like they could be paying for things that their insurance will pay for, like removal of shrubbery. That's usually included. You know what I mean? So there are removal, things of, your own. removal of what? Removal of shrubbery. If you want to like oh, the, sh the shrubbery. Yeah. Really? Yeah, shrubbery. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're you're if your shed if your shed is hit by lightning, your policy will cover your shed. Yeah. Um yeah, if you have a, a separate structure on your property if it gets if it gets burned down it's covered um it, some policies will even cover you for um cyber crimes if you get your identity theft they'll pay for like twenty five thousand uh, dollars to recover what you've lost so wow. uh yeah there's so much stuff that people don't even realize that they have in their policy because they never read it because uh, what i found is that most when, when people buy a home 
And insurance is the butt naked last thing that they think of, right? And usually it's manipulated um, by the insurance agent and the lender to yeah. make sure it comes under what they need to qualify for the loan. And then they never fix, like, I don't, I don't have a problem with that, but then they never fix it. So mm -hmm. usually um, they get it down really low because they've se se severely escalated the deductible. So uh, you can have like a $10,000 deductible and not even know it because you needed it to be at a certain price for the loan. So if you do have a tragedy and you look at it and you don't have $10,000, your insurance isn't going to pay for anything. So always make sure you fully understand, make sure that you get walked through that home policy step by step, line by line before you sign off on it. Mm. Make sure so you guess, understand it completely before you sign off on it. So then that's what we all need to do. That's that's the next step. I mean, in addition to getting our health right, we have to get our insurance right to protect our home. Yeah. And, and yeah. those are definitely Please. two different topics. And, and I definitely want to have you back on another episode to talk about that because I do think there's, even for myself, I don't think I've looked at my policy. I did look at my policy. Actually, no, the last time that I had an, an insurance agent on, I did look at my policy and I learned that my she shed, I think I've got maybe $40,000 of coverage. So if yeah. something happens, but I can tell you that by the time I paid 20,000 for my shed and you know, the, you can't see it, but off here to the side, I've got a $5,000 uh, Mitsubishi um, heater right here, um, mini split. By the time you add in all those things, it probably is over 40,000. So I may not even be able to cover everything in my she shed if something were to happen. Well, the good so, news is the good news is, is that it may be covered under personal property, and that's a separate mm -hmm. um, line right there. So you've got um, your your unattached structures, right? That's covered. Then you've got personal property, which is covered also. So personal property is if you cut off the roof of your house, you turn it upside down, and you shake it. Whatever mm -hmm. falls out is personal property, and that's what's covered under that line. So you've got so you have dwelling, which is the house itself, then you've got the uh, unattached um, structures, which is like sheds and whatnot, then you've got personal property. Um, and you can adjust the amount of coverage that, that you want for personal property, and you can also adjust uh, their percentage of your dwelling to cover um, your unattached structures. And then you've got liability, which of course is like, like that, that's your lawsuit protection. Someone gets hurt on your property, you know, you you might assault them on your property or or whatever. You know, that's or your lawsuit protection. You might have you might have a painter or maybe a landscaper come to your house to do some work and they're injured. Right. So that would be covered under that liability, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna definitely have you back. We're gonna talk more about that because I, I think that is important and it you're right. Most people get that insurance and they just never look at it. And they only they only know what they have until they actually need to use it. And then they may be unpleasantly surprised that they don't have some of the coverage that they might need. So we'll have to talk about that. Is there any last things that you want to share with us that you, that you do? You do a lot of things. You do, yeah. you're, a, you're a chef. So you're oh, a chef. chef. I mean, you're a chef in your, you're, you're a chef of your home, like your yeah. domain. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm are the chef. chef of your home. I'm a personal chef, you know. And you're a personal <laughs> chef. Yeah, exactly. I love yeah. to cook. But um, uh, I'm not a, a trainer anymore. I mean, I just, um, I fill in for a friend of mine who has a studio here. If he wants some time off, I'll take, I'll train some of his clients, you know, when he takes time off. Um, Saturday mornings, I teach a kettlebell class. It's, it's, it's just for fun because I, I love to teach. And even though I don't want to do it for a living anymore, I still like to kind of like stay, keep, I'll keep one toe in the water, you know, oh, yeah. just, to, just to have a little fun and uh, people seem to enjoy it. Um, so yeah, but the podcast, uh, life, love and hustle, it's going to be available on all platforms, uh, mid June, I mean, mid May. And we're going to talk about, uh, the story behind the stories, um, of entrepreneurs, artists and activists and, you know, what motivates them and, uh, what the future holds for them. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you were one of my favorite interviews so far. And I knew, hey. I knew it would be that, yeah, that. That was definitely a good time. I, I appreciate you. you. 
I know. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And that's why I was like, oh, can we continue talking about stuff? Just come on my <laughs> podcast because I didn't have anything planned for today. I usually will figure it out at some point during the day. But um, yeah, this this was like the perfect conversation. All right. So I guess we will have all your links down below. And uh, I will remind people, you know, because I think next week, I think we have a little bit of time before your podcast goes live. But when it goes live, I will remind people again to have a listen. I can't wait. Did you, let me ask you, did, did you get a chance to interview the mayor of Hagerstown? Um, no, but that's happening this weekend. It is. Yes. So one of our classmates, I think she may have graduated the same year as me. She is the mayor she did. of the newly elected mayor of Hagerstown. So we're, we're from Hagerstown, which is, I don't know, I say small, but Hagerstown, I guess for Western Maryland, it's actually one of the bigger cities. Yeah, per capita. Western it's, Maryland. it's, it's actually one of the most populated cities in, in Maryland. That's insane. Cause I've always considered yeah. it to be like just this small little Western Maryland town. I mean, it is and it isn't. It's it's a weird area of, of the state. And you know? I tell you, Chad, when I come back to Hagerstown, it's I it, I don't know. I have these emotions. I feel this sense of nostalgia because mm-hmm. you know I can go down Jonathan Street and see there's a clothing store that's down there on Jonathan Street. And I don't know the name of it, but it has these two black statues uh, that look like like a horse's head. And they were posted right outside of this clothing store. And when I was a kid, I used to remember because I lived on Jonathan Street for a number of years. And I remember when we would walk down there, I would kiss the nose of these two little statues. And they're still there. They're yeah, that was um here. It wasn't actually on Jonathan, but it was like right off Jonathan. I think it was called um Leeds, maybe, or maybe it was like yes. further up, a little further up from. Yeah, me. I think it was called Leeds, L E E D S, I believe. But I know right because uh, I know right what you mean because I used to go in there all the time and go look at the oh, clothes. Really? Yeah, I never <laughs> bought anything. Actually, I think I bought a three quarter trench coat. Oh. <laughs> I think there once. So it's very it's very nostalgic when I when I drive through. I'm like, oh, I remember those, and I remember we would cruise the dual highway, and but then. When I'm there, you know, again, I still feel that sense of nostalgia. But when I leave, I feel like this sense of like, oh, like it feels good to leave and go back to like my home. And it's not just my home. but There's something about leaving Hagerstown that makes me just feel happy to leave. But then I feel like that cozy sense of, wow, this is where I'm from. And, you know, you'll run into someone that you hadn't seen since years and you You may not even really have known them, but you recognize their face. And so they're, they're people that have always been in your space or in your, your hometown for years. Like one day, I, this was a several years ago, there was, I think it was the Jazz Fest at the city park. And I ran into, yeah. she was like my preschool teacher. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, there's my I remember preschool. you. You're still alive? It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she remembered me. She remembered me and I took a picture with her and everything. So it's this, it's this warm feeling that I have when I come back, but then there's like this happiness when I leave, like, oh, get to go back to, you know, I don't right. know. It's just so strange. I've never been able it's to place new, it before. It's your new home, you know? I guess, I guess. But then, you know, when I think about like, hey, I'm going to stop by Chad's place and get some like get some cal- 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 pizza. pizza. Yeah. Like it feels good thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to connect with these people that I've known for like more than half of my life. So it feels good. But then it's like, when I leave, I'm I'm always kind of happy to happy to leave and come back to like this area. I don't know what well, it remember, is. I actually moved to, um I moved to Frederick last January. So I'm not I'm not even in, in Hagerstown anymore. Oh, you're not in specifically. Oh, okay. Well, okay, why was I thinking that you were in Hagerstown? Oh, uh, no, I'm in Frederick. Well, I was there yesterday for some work, but uh yeah. Okay. So for those who are listening, Frederick is it's about 20 minutes um south. Yeah. No. It's like south, south, yeah, kind of south, east. yeah. Yeah, like southeast. And Frederick is great. Like downtown Frederick, oh my gosh. It's like yeah, it's this crazy. hip little happening spot. Maybe mm-hmm. that's where I'll have to meet you, downtown Frederick. I love it. Every year, I'll tell you this and then I'll let you go. Every year for my birthday, my mom's birthday is, mine's December 13th, hers is the 19th. So I usually will come to Hagerstown, we'll go eat somewhere. And on the way back, I'll stop in Hagerstown, uh, not Hagerstown, uh, downtown Frederick, and I'll just go shopping and go to the little boutique shops and find little trinkets and Christmas gifts since it's so close yeah. to Christmas. 
And it's just such a great location, this downtown Frederick. And I always wondered why Hagerstown wasn't able to recreate that, that same trendy. Again, that is a whole nother topic right there. Please ask, um, I can't think of her name. Um, Takesha. Yes, yes, yes. Takesha, please ask her how we can make that happen in Hagerstown. <laughs> oh, oh, there are things happening right now. There's really? big things happening right now that are coming down the pike that are finally happening that, you know, will make a lot of those things possible mm. for sure. Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that definitely offline. There's a lot yes. of things to talk about, oh, about awesome. on, on that note. All right, well, thank you, Chad, so much for being a part of the Thrift Diving Podcast. And I hope people will go down to the link below, check out his podcast, Live uh, Life, Love, and Hustle. And That's then right. you to the podcast that I did with him and all the other great stuff that he's that he's doing. Thank you, Chad. Hey, thank you. Love you. Wasn't that a great episode? It was so much fun talking to him. I just wish that he and I had connected sooner. And it's great talking to someone when you know that you have all this history, like you go way, way, way back. They knew you back before <laughs> anybody else knew you. And it's just really a cool idea connecting with some of your old friends. But this was a great episode because I think if you listen to this, if you are somebody who is sedentary, you're going to be inspired to get started today. Walk, lift five pound weights, one pound weights, whatever you need to do to take yourself to the next level to protect your body so that you can continue doing all of the great crafts, all of the furniture makeovers. You can continue to maintain your home, clean your own floor, vacuum. That's what you want. You want to be independent. You want to be creative. And you want to know that your health is going to support you in all that you do. I do want to apologize for the quality of the audio. You know, if I do interviews with people, I'm using Zoom. And for some reason, it just doesn't sound very well. When I'm using my regular microphone, great. But the minute it's come, it, the recording goes through Zoom, it just sounds well. Oh. So I got to figure out how to improve that so that I can give you better quality audio. Anyway, I still hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you will check out Chad's podcast, Life, Love, and Hustle. That will be dropping May 15th. I will leave a link down below in the show notes when it's available. And come back again next week for another episode of the Thrift Diving Podcast because we're going to do something fun and hopefully inspire you. You know I'll be showing up every week unless something happens. <laughs> but I do my best to show up and I'm so thankful that you take the time out of your day to show up as well. I'll see you next episode. Diving. Find it ugly, make it pretty. Mm. Paint a power tools all right. Saving money with those thrift store vibes.